We're going to learn about area of squares and rectangles in this video. We're at lesson 15b. If you missed 15a, there's a link to it in the description along with some other helpful ones. Okay. Area is the measure of square units needed to cover a flat surface without any gaps or overlaps. And the area tells us how many square units are on the inside. We did perimeter in the last video. That was like a fence going around the outside of a yard. Now we're going to figure out what the inside measure is in square units. If this side is four units long and this side is five units long squares, we would just do length times width, four times five, and that would tell us the inside. If we counted all of these inside, we'd get 20. See? 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 units. And knowing the definition of a square or rectangle can help. A square has four equal sides. If we're only given one length and it's a square, well, we know that all of them are the same. So that's got to be a three inch. We could do three times three and know that the area is a nine. Every side is the same length, so we just need one side. See? We could do any number of a square, any measure, and then just know what the other measure is going to be because they're all the same. Okay? Here we've got this side is 5 feet, that side is 5 feet, so the area is 5 times 5. It's 25. There would be 25 squares inside of here, 25 one-foot squares. And this means 5 squared. See? And there's a little 2 exponent here. This little 2 exponent tells us how many times to multiply 5 to itself. Not by itself, to itself. Just remember, we don't do 5 times 2. It tells us how many 5s we're multiplying. So that's 5 times 5. There's two of them, see? If we want to do this on a calculator, the one that they're going to lend you for the GED test, you put in the 5. You hit this X squared button. It's this button right here. It looks like a script X with a little 2 exponent. You hit the equal sign, and a 25 will appear on the display. So even if you have a really huge number and you need to square it, you can just put that number in, hit the X squared button, and equals, and you'll get the answer. Okay? Now some polygons are complex shapes made up of a combination of squares and rectangles. So we don't have a measure for the top or the side, but we could figure it out. We can find the area of these complex shapes by breaking them into smaller shapes. So this could end up being this. We'll just draw some lines down. And by doing that, we can find the area. We know that this is a 4 and that's a 2. So we know inside of here is an 8, isn't it? It's 4 times 2. And if that's 2 and that's 2, then this whole thing is a 4. That means we have 4 times 4. So inside of here is a 16. Now, for the whole height here, we've got a 2 and a 2 and a 2. And these three heights right here equal this side. Whoops. Dropped my marker. So we know that this length, this length, and this length is equal to this one because it's basically a big rectangle with just a piece missing, right? So we know that this is 6. It's 2 and 2 and 2. So if that's a 6, we can put that there to help us. And if this is a 4 and this is a 4, and this whole thing is 18, we can do 18 minus the 8, the 4 plus 4, to know that this missing piece is a 10. See? So we didn't know that it was a 10. It was missing. But by adding the 4 in the 4 and taking it away from this big 18, we know now that it's a 10. So now we've got this measure, this measure, and 10 times 6 is 60. All we have to do is add these three up, and we'll have the area. We'll have 84 square units, okay? Let's do one that's a little bit harder. So, now we've got this weird shape, and the top is not as long as the bottom, okay? So, let me take these out. Maybe that'll help your eyes a little bit, okay? So, we've got only that the bottom is 14 feet, this is 5 feet, this is 5 feet, this is 5 feet, that's 2 feet, and that's 4 feet. So the only difference between this bottom piece and this top piece is if that's 5 feet and that's 2 feet, 
then that must be three feet here, right? So the only thing keeping this top line from being the same measure as this one is this missing three feet here. That tells us that the top must be 11 because 14 take away three is 11. If we split this into three rectangles instead of one big rectangle, you know, if the lines weren't here, then all we have to do is 4 times 11, or 11 times 4, that's going to give us 44. Then, this is 5 feet. To find this one, we do this 14 feet minus this 5 feet. That's going to give us 9. 14 minus 5 is 9, right? So we're going to do 9 times that 5, and that's going to be 45. See? Now the only thing that's left is 14 times 5. And 14 times 5 is 70. So now all we have to do is add the 44, the 45, and the 70 together, and we get 159 square feet. So to explain this top one more time, we knew this big long bottom is 14 feet, and this is 5 feet, this is 2 feet. The only difference between these two is 3 feet that is missing from this 2 feet, right? Length from this side. So if the difference between the 5 feet and the 2 feet is 3 feet, then the, and this is a big rectangle, then we know the only difference between the 14 feet and this one would be a 3 foot difference. That's how we got the 11, see? So we can use the given measures to help us determine the missing measures. And then we break the shape into three shapes to find the area and then get a total. Okay? So you can use common sense and deduction to figure out what the missing measure is. Okay? For this one, we don't have the top measure. We just know that this is three centimeters and this is two centimeters. So what we can do is we can find the area of this entire thing by doing the 12 centimeters times the 12 centimeters as if it was one big square. And 12 squared, that's 12 times 12, is 144. And that's if that piece wasn't missing. Then what we can do is do the 2 centimeters times the 3 centimeters to find out that this area is 6 in here. We'll just do 144 minus the 6 that's missing and get 138, see? So we can find the entire area and then just subtract this corner that we know the measures, see? We could also break it apart. We could break it apart so that it was two rectangles. If that's two centimeters and that's three centimeters, then we know that this part right here, this rectangle right here, is 12 minus this 3. That's how we got the 9. See? It's this whole length minus this 3 gives us the 9, and then we multiply it by that 2 on the side. We get 18. And that's going to leave this 12 centimeters down here, and we're going to take 2 away from here. See? Because we're stopping it right here. We're trying to find this area now. So if this whole thing is a 12 and that's a 2, we're going to take that 2 away and get a 10. So now to find this area down here, we're just going to do 12 times 10 and get 120. We can add the 18 to the 120 and get the same answer, 138 square centimeters. So either way, we can do it through subtraction and finding out what the whole thing is and then subtracting the part that we can find. Or we could break it apart into separate ones and then find what the area is, and then add them together, okay? Either way, you're going to get a right answer, all right? I have a couple more examples for you that are important. We've got this drawing here, and it shows a yard. And there's going to be a flower garden in the center that's 14 feet by 24 feet, and around it is going to be grass. And the whole thing is 30 feet by 40 feet with this 14 foot by 24 foot thing in the center, the flowers. So how many square feet of grass is around the flowers? So we're not going to count the flowers. We just need this big, wide strip of grass going all the way around it. We need to find the square footage for that. 
So what we do is we find the square footage for the entire thing, the 30 times the 40 or 40 times the 30, same thing. We get 1,200. Then we find the square footage for the flowers, the 24 times 14, that's 336. And we just subtract this 336 from the big area, and that'll tell us the remainder of what should be grass, 864 square feet. We found the total area of the large rectangle by multiplying the length times the width. Then we found the area of the smaller inside rectangle, doing length times width, and then we subtracted that smaller area from the bigger area, and we got the square footage of the grass area, okay? We can even do that with stuff around the house, like if you want to paint this wall, but you don't want to paint the door, one quart of paint covers 100 square feet. Is one quart enough to paint this wall? So we know the wall is 12 feet across and 8 feet tall, but the door is 7 feet tall and 3 feet across. So we're not painting the door, we're just painting the wall. So we find the area for the entire thing, 8 times 12 is 96. Then we find the area of the door, the 7 times 3 is a 21. And we subtract the area of the door from the area of the wall. We get 75 feet squared. See, you can write it square feet, or you can write it feet with the little two exponent, feet squared. So yes, if, it, if one quart does 100 square feet, and this is only 75, then yeah, we've got plenty of paint, okay? All right, so now you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 173. Do not use a calculator for part A. You want to be able to see how you would do if you were actually doing the GED test. And for the questions in part A, there's no calculator, okay? So you want to see how you're going to do on that. And then part B, go ahead and use your calculator, all right? Our next video is going to be all about volume. That's 15C. And I'm going to have links to these grade 3, grade 4, and grade 6 videos that can help you with area of squares and rectangles, okay? The grade 6 one even gets a little more advanced than what we're talking about. So I want you to be careful with 12.4. But 12.5 is good, and these are really, really good. You'll really understand area if you watch these videos. You'll be a pro, okay? So I hope you're having a great day. If you ever feel overwhelmed, just take a break, all right? If you're feeling like you're really getting it, then keep going because you want to keep up the pace and you don't want to stop right when you, you're on a roll, okay? And don't quit, all right? Have, have some stick to You're going to make it through this. Just retreat, regroup, watch videos that will help you, and then just keep plowing through it, okay? We're almost to algebra. I'll see you next video. Bye.